Weeps come out to play. When Weeps react. <laughs> Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, we're here with reacting to another video. Uh, Joey, what are we going to do today? 10 craziest fights in NFL history. Oh no. Yeah, can't we all just get along? <laughs> Not apparently in the NFL, I guess. But uh, yeah, so yeah, we're excited to see this one. Um, it's been a while since we did like a NFL like um, related um, mm -hmm. video. So without further ado, let's hit it. Blood boils in the game of football. Uh, That's Jr. just the way oh, it is. Sometimes things get out of hand, and fans are given absolute treats of insanity and violence. Here's the top 10 craziest fights in yeah. NFL history. Yeah, he was part Miles of Miles Garrett Bowl. versus Mason Rudolph. Wasn't he? Yep. Arguably the craziest moment in football history. Late in a game on Thursday night between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns, Miles Garrett hit quarterback Mason Rudolph. Rudolph took exception to the hit and grabbed Miles' face mask. The two scuffled on the ground and this. fought back up to their feet. When Garrett yanked Rudolph's helmet off, Mason refused to back down, regardless of the two oh, people oof. between them. Then the legit craziest thing ever happened. Garrett used Rudolph's own helmet helmet and bashed him in the head with it. There wasn't a jaw left undropped. Damn, Everyone man. stood frozen in shock, except the, the world's greatest yeah. best friend, Marquise Pouncey. Uh, Pouncey, just like the name, pounced on Garrett. He attacked with vicious rights and kicked him in the head. The NFL's malice in the palace was worth the price of admission. Both benches cleared, and it took several minutes to settle it down. The helmet smash was heinous and could have severely yeah. injured Rudolph or any oh. other player. Yeah, the NFL did not take it lightly. Suspending Miles Garrett for the remainder of the season, Pouncey, our NFL homeboy of the year, was suspended three games for the action. And we'll never forget this one. I can promise you that. Odell Beckham Jr. versus Josh Norman. This was a good Speaking one. Speaking of two guys who just don't like this. each other, the beef of Odell Beckham Jr. and Josh Norman is one of our favorites. Part of what made Josh Norman great was a huge chip on his shoulder, and for that same reason, he hated OBJ just, and his princess upbringing as a first-round pick. Norman and other Panthers <laughs> no. ran around the pregame with a bat, <laughs> swinging it around and trying to intimidate the Giants. This pissed off Beckham and set the tone for the rest of the game. Regardless of the integrity, I remember with Beckham, like I think he kind of made that hairstyle like like popular. Every uh -huh. I ever since Beckham started doing this to his hair, uh -huh. I've seen a lot of kids did like the same kind of style with him, uh -huh. bleached hair with the, I guess the mohawk or something. So uh -huh. it's pretty popular. <laughs> and they're both. Yeah. Josh Norman's a good CB. So. Mm. ...of the game, what happened next was awesome. So, oh. Every play, it seemed like the cameras were cutting from oh, the play to focus on the yeah. real action. Norman and OBJ getting into it. Every run was a chance to watch these guys go to yeah, war. Emotions continued to rise, as did the drama in the game. One time, Norman would get the better. The next time, OBJ would handle Norman to the ground. They traded blows. On fourth and two, Beckham caught a pass for a first down. Norman slung him to the ground and sprawled on him. As he got up, Beckham tried to trip him, earning the first of six personal oh, fouls called upon over. him. In the third quarter, Odell went on a headhunt for the Norman, not be. once, but twice oh. in a play, oh. rocking him with a bad cheap shot. Norman had officially thrown Odell off of his game, living in his head. The next round, Norman blasted Odell. However, it began to look like OBJ and the Giants were gaining their composure. They fought back from 28 yeah. points down. On fourth and five, game on the line, Odell got the last laugh. He beat Norman in coverage, scored the go. game tying touchdown, and did his best AI step over yep. impression he did do it. over Norman. Yep. The two still <laughs> hate each other. And this is just the that start one. of an yeah. awesome rivalry. AJ Green versus Jalen Ramsey. Talk about two complete opposites. AJ Green is the reserved silent killer at receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals. Jalen Ramsey is one of the game's best trash talkers and a lockdown corner for Saxonville at the time. It didn't take long for Ramsey's words to get under the skin of the mild mannered receiver. Every play, he was pushing Green and calling him soft. Green just couldn't get going. Getting physically shut down and mentally, it looked like Ramsey was all in his head. Green started yapping back, calling him weak 
week after he caught a ball that quarterback Andy Dalton pushed too far outside. <laughs> Man, With only one catch in the first half, job, Ramsey bro. continued to talk and push. However, it was one push too many as he shoved AJ Green and walked off. AJ came up behind Jalen and put him in a real yeah. naked choke. <laughs> Sleeper hold. The <laughs> as soon as he hit the, the ground, million dollar dream. <laughs> And slammed him exactly. back down as he got up. That's it's what's one of up. the most surprising <laughs> moments from Green. He just lost his cool. Yeah, AJ I never Green seen him continued go off to like hammer Ramsey Green. until the two teams intervened. Just, Both were ejected you know, from the game. Calm. Cortland Finnegan versus Andre Johnson. You know, no. corners and receivers really don't like each other, do they? Speaking of silent assassins, Andre Johnson was one of the league's strongest and most physical receivers. Cortland Finnegan was the league loudmouth. Round one, fight. After oh, two plus guy. plays yeah. of physical blocking, Finnegan's helmet flung off to get revenge. The very next play, Cortland made it his mission to get after Johnson. Andre turned him around and snatched Jeez. his helmet off his head, and we're off. As he was hitting Finnegan, Finnegan got a tug of Johnson's face mask and Oof. ripped his helmet off, launching it 20 feet away. <laughs> Big mistake, buddy. Andre Johnson <laughs> spun him down and began wailing on him, Dang, overhand dude. right after overhand right after overhand right. The two ended up getting separated, but sheesh. Winner and new middleweight champion of the world, <laughs> Andre Johnson. <laughs> Cortland Finnegan learned a valuable Gosh, lesson dude. that day. Aqib Talib versus Michael oh, yeah. Crabtree. Talib! These this guys one I remember hated too. each other. It all started with a chain. Dude, Michael Crabtree was known Dude. for wearing a chain in. Remove your freaking chain, by the way, when you're playing. <laughs> what, what do you think he guy is gonna do to well, start? You think it? He remove it the second time. He, played he did. He did it the second I time. I know he, huh? did, he didn't remove it. He yeah. <laughs> I'm a dude. You gotta remove you your think chain. You learned a lesson the first time. Yeah, exactly. Nope. Yeah every game that for some reason Aqib Talib just didn't like. In 2016, Talib decided to do something about it. He snatched the chain right off Crabtree's neck. On the sidelines, Talib was yeah. joking about it, reenacting the action. Crabtree didn't respond on that day. He took the high road, but he did say he didn't like Talib. In the next meeting, he taped the chain. Talib was trying to make a point. Crabtree came in with a plan, and it only took the first drive to put it in motion. As Crab Crabtree blocked Talib. Aqib took the liberty of removing the chain from Crabtree once more. <laughs> this time, Crabtree didn't hold back. He viciously blocked yeah, Talib into miss. oblivion, shoveling him into the dirt along the sidelines. He knocked over other players, chain gang, and equipment guys in his wake. The gloves were off, and a chain too. Talib ripped Crabtree's <laughs> helmet off of him before heaving it right back at him. The helmet nearly hit multiple people and both teams cleared their bench. It was like the end of an action movie. The two main characters yeah. fought separately no one the band of other. armies. Yeah. They swung wildly at each other. We never really got to see the boxing match, so we're still waiting on the paper. I cut a little bit of that. Um, they didn't, one thing they didn't say is what the play before that, he, mm -hmm. uh, what's his name, Crabtree second, uh, did something to Harris, and that's what triggered the whole thing. The oh, really? The play. Okay. That's probably what like fueled it, too. Uh, so. Yeah. Pay per view. Steve Smith versus Malcolm Jenkins. Steve Smith will be known for two things the best little guy in the NFL and an obnoxiously <laughs> awesome trash talker. You don't spit as much as Smith and knock it into your fair share of fights. First, Steve Smith embarrasses Saints corner Jabari Greer on a jump ball, tossing him away like garbage as he scampered Oof. into the end zone. Apparently, it hurt Roman Harper's feelings to get <laughs> even. Harper hit Smith with a blatant cheap shot after he scored. A brawl broke out almost immediately, but the best part is Steve Smith didn't even get involved yet. He boasts and celebrates, beating on his helmet. Then Smith ran to the first guy he found, who happened to be Malcolm Jenkins. Yeah. In one of the most hardcore moves ever, Smith grabs Jenkins by the face mask, pulling him around like a mean nanny pulls around a spoiled eight-year-old. <laughs> he hoisted Jenkins in the air and slammed him back to the ground choke slam style as the uh, two yeah. teams pile on the action. After manhandling Jenkins, Smith casually separated himself from the sea of bodies. Don't tug on Superman's cape and don't mess with Steve Smith. Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore. 
Marshawn Lattimore is the world's expert on stopping Mike Evans. Evans' size, speed, and strong well, he got a, hands he got a make ring, him though. That's good. unguardable. But Lattimore dominates their biannual meetings. Maybe that frustration got to him on this occasion. Lattimore and Jamie's Winston were arguing near the sideline. As Lattimore walked away, Winston taunted him, pointing at the field and then pointing at Lattimore before he started shoving him with his finger. Lattimore turned around and shoved him back. They were jawing when Mike Evans blinds sided Lattimore, coming from out of nowhere, laid out. Evans went to the ground and pounded Lattimore, but then he's blasted by another Saints defender with a rescue. A Pier 6 brawl erupted from the sidelines. For a moment, absolute bedlam covered the TV screen. Saints head coach Sean Payton is seen halfway across the field berating and pointing at the Bucks sidelines. Players had to be separated. The blood between Evans and Lattimore still hasn't settled in 2020. Just a few weeks Weeks ago, they were at it again, and we're all here for it. Buddy Ryan and Kevin Gilbride. <laughs> Finally, we get a little coach-on-coach coach oh, action. Geez. Buddy Ryan was the defensive coordinator for the 1993 Houston Oilers, where Kevin Gilbride was the offensive play caller. Him, Buddy okay. is one of the most I colorful don't. characters Charger. in the history of the NFL. Like he he became no coach, wasn't he? What's that? I thought he was a Charger coach at one time. Oh, man. I'm thinking. I, I gotta forgot. check this out. 98. 97, 98. Cause I started following the Chargers about '93, I think. Yeah, you probably tried block. I don't blame you. You probably tried blocking that memory out. <laughs> yeah. It said '97, '98. So it must have sucked. Dude, yeah. So. <laughs> All uh. right known for the 46 defense, but mainly just being insane. On national television, the Oilers jumped to a 14-0 lead and were driving again. Way too aggressive. Gilbride called a play that led to the quarterback fumbling. Buddy was a huge critic of Gilbride's offense, the mocking the run and shoot as the chuck and duck. As they came off the field, Ryan had words for Kevin. He clearly muttered back, and Ryan only got louder. In a bizarre moment, up two touchdowns on a winning buddy ryan that's um rex ryan's dad right buddy ryan yeah okay and also so. um for sure there's another one too like a one that was on the saints numbers. three sons jim fraternals twins and rex and rob Rex and Rob. Ryan had words for Kevin. He clearly muttered Me? back, and Ryan only got louder. In a bizarre moment, up two touchdowns on a winning team, Buddy channeled his Evander <laughs> Holyfield and jabbed Gilbride with a strong right hand. No oh, Gilbride nice. was stunned, and before he even got to react, Oilers players separated the two. It was all the NFL could talk about. The feelings never faded. Buddy said that Gilbride will be selling insurance <laughs> so in two I got years. Him good. Well, Buddy didn't get along with two yeah, see? anyway. Yeah. Joey Porter versus Willie Green. This fight couldn't even wait until the opening Green. kickoff. Joey Porter got the pregame trash talking going early. He crossed the 50 yard line, which is frowned upon during warm ups, ripping Browns players as they came out the tunnel. Well, he finally ran up on the right guy, William Green. As the Browns runner started jawing back, Green got into Porter's face, who then spit in Green's eyes. Green retaliated with a massive headbutt and damn. Ding ding, it was on. Joey Porter <laughs> threw a haymaker with the left, gashing William Green's lip. Green tossed a hard right that missed before another Browns player came up and caught a punch from Porter. For a brief moment, Porter and Green went mano y mano. They both connected multiple times before the other players broke it up. The NFL ejected both of them before kickoff. Joey <laughs> Porter backed up his psycho antics with a hard left. The punch also paved oh, the man. way for the Steeler legend, James Harrison, yeah, who started in Porter's place that game. Like Albert Debo. Hainsworth versus Andre Girard. Oh, this one is more of a manslaughter than it is a fight. As the Cowboys stomped into the end zone, well, Albert Hainsworth decided to stomp on something else. Center Andre Girard was at the bottom of the pile when Hainsworth kicked him with his helmet on. His helmet fell off Ooh. and exposed Girard to Hainsworth's next act, stomping his head into the turf. One of the most oh, savage geez, moments dude. in sports history, Girard laid there in the fetal That's position, covering too. up yeah. as his teammates came to the 
the rescue. Scuffling with Albert near the goal line, Gerard emerged with a crimson mask. The doctors rushed to clean him up. Hainsworth's barbaric decision took 30 stitches on the top and bottom of Andre's right eye to seal up. Hainsworth was immediately flagged, and in the middle of the frustration and scuffle with other Cowboys players, he slammed his own helmet on the ground. Hainsworth was ejected for the game and given the longest suspension for an on-field He slammed his own helmet on the ground. <laughs> that guy's a big thing. Oh my goodness, he did what? <laughs> it wasn't the other player, it was his own. <laughs> Shit. Incident oh the no! Time, five games, but that might not have been five enough for gashing Gerard up. Should have been Luckily, the whole season. Gerard didn't right have now. any long-term injuries from the incident. So there you guys have it: the ten craziest Jeez. fights in NFL Bro. history. Which fight was your favorite to watch? And were there? Oh man, I do definitely remember that Steve Smith one. Yeah, that guy is. Yeah, <laughs> that guy's a good receiver, but man. You on his bad side? Jeez, dude, that's bad. Talib, Talib. Yeah, I actually. I hated him when he was. I hated him butt. too, of course. Once he came with Bronco. Woohoo! Yeah, <laughs> isn't that funny how it all works out like that? Yeah. Like I hate that guy. He's on the Broncos. Woohoo! <laughs> it's like jeez. Same with Romanowski. I hated him when he was, when once he left the Broncos. Oh my goodness, I hated him oh, so much. Oh man, yeah. Uh, Liked him when he was the Broncos. Yeah, it it actually happens like that though, because then you know. I, the only team I really follow now, like besides football uh, teams, is um, the Lakers. And then there's some players like, man, I can't stand that guy. And then when you get him on the Lakers, like, oh yeah, cool, let's get him. <laughs> you know, it's just like, <laughs> let's get him, yeah, no. yeah. So as long as he's on the team you're rooting for, it's well, all I did, good. I did not, I did not like Peyton Man because he was like an advertisement billboard. Oh, of course he was. Oh, as soon as the Broncos had a chance, that I'm a wall. Oh, oh, please get him! Please get him! <laughs> Come on, you can get him! Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, have to I have to admit, like, that was a good move by them, too. I mean, oh, yeah. Yes. Peyton's like, you know, Peyton Manning. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, when <laughs> you stoked up it. Like, oh, right, yeah. Dude, oh, they I'm shouldn't so have happy. never gotten rid of him. They sh I mean, they were banking on Andrew Luck, right, at the time. Oh, oh, oh the, Indiana, oh Indianapolis. Yeah, that was. And then, so what happened was they ended up game pain. Or Many scuffles pain. that didn't. Uh, yeah. We know, we don't need to know. <laughs> don't interrupt the video for that. <laughs> yeah, like, um, what was they saying? Oh, yeah, so when, like, that whole Andrew Luck thing came, uh -huh. and then I'm like, man, what are you guys doing? He had to decide, and it's just like. Oh, I have fueled his fire, though, dude. And he got him that, he got you that oh, ring, so dude. I'm so happy. I mean, I like Tebow. I mean, he, 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 if it wasn't for Tebow, we would not have Pat Manning, I don't think. Yeah. He got the publicity on, on the whole team. Yeah. So, I mean, our team was the laughing stock of the league. Until yeah. The well, you guys were in the playoffs, and I think, wasn't it he got well, he you through the first round? Yeah, the first time he, we were terrible the year before, and then he got him. Yeah. And then second, uh, Kyle Warren sucked it up. Oh, uh, yeah. Got Tebow in. And even though he was, he, you know, made some miracles happen. So. Oh, yeah. He I mean, miracle it wasn't just him. It was the whole team had to do it. Yeah. Like, we had to, like, count on, like, stuff, like, some guy running out of bounds. But yeah. When we, all he had to do was take a knee and we would have like, yeah. lost. So right. So we counted on, like, sucking miracles, and that's how we won that season. Yeah. So, and the, but the, the publicity that team got that year. Because of Tebow. He was on everything. Yeah. And I that's mean, why I think he maybe yeah. eventually came to the Broncos. To this, to this day, like, no one can hate that guy. I mean, that guy is actually a wholesome dude. You know what I mean? He started coming back with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, you. that's right. Oh, and then he got <laughs> cut. He yeah. Cut now, so. But no, man. I mean, um, well, he did what he did. I mean, oh, when yeah, he was in. And, um, so. He just didn't want to step down. Yeah, he didn't want to try a different position. I mean, yeah. uh, I would have minded if it kept, kept them as a backup. For me. Backup quarterback? Yeah, but. Yeah. We had I guess they had They didn't want the, uh, the Manning sucked or something that. Yeah. Everybody's gonna be like, oh, table, table. yeah, I think so. maybe it's because like um, they wanted to give Peyton Manning like the max contract, you know, to sign him, and so they had to get rid of Tebow. It's my guess. Oh, or Tebow, yeah, we traded him for like I forgot, I like, Our Jets, or, right? Yeah, Jets. Yeah, so. Huh, okay. Yeah. Was, oh. All right. Oh, sorry, got off topic there. <laughs> yeah, that was great, man. <laughs> great video there. Yeah. Squirrel. All right. Okay. All right.
So that does this video. So if you guys like this video, uh, smash the like button and subscribe to us too. When we react. Oh yeah. Yeah, brother. <laughs> All right, see, see ya. ya. <laughs> when we react. <laughs>